Welcome back to the Village Clockmaker. I'm James. Um, I decided after much cogitation to cut this out by hand. Uh, I was going to use it, use the pantograph, but it's just too small for that. If you remember, I think it was part two, we had uh, this bottom, you can see the bottom wheel down there and uh, this is the original wheel here and I this this is called a mini plate that I made years ago uh, actually got the idea from Tom Lipton but um, I made all this and this this holds things down very very well and I made sure everything was very square this fits on here just perfectly. It's all centered with a with a gauge pin here through the middle uh, that just fits in a slip fit. So uh, I think this is going to work. So the next thing to do is um, scratch this out very carefully. I'm using the tweezers instead of a instead of a uh, carbide tip because it's sharper. It makes a, it makes a finer line, and it doesn't hurt the tweezers. So we'll go ahead and do this. And um, next we have to drill four holes, one in each one in each section here segment, and um, then we'll cut it out with a uh, with a jeweler saw. Uh, we'll probably cut away from the line a few thou and finish it up by filing. So uh, I'll be back as soon as I get this all set up. I don't know if you can see that or not. You can see the scratches. Yeah, there you go. Now we'll drill a few holes and uh, we'll start sawing. Okay, we got our holes drilled. about ready to start sawing. I used a number 55 drill on that um, on that hole. You see why I didn't want to do this, it takes a while. You don't want to saw on the line, you want to just saw up close to it. This is a very fine uh, blade. The idea is to keep the saw absolutely perpendicular. And of course the teeth on the saw are facing down.
You can turn a pretty sharp radius with this fine a blade. first one. You don't need to see all these so I'll uh, there's the first one. Yeah, even even that sawing away from the line we got up pretty close to the to the edge there. So I uh, I'll cut the rest out and then we'll uh, file them. Okay, there it is, rough sawn. You see we stayed away from the inside edge of the of the wheel. So uh, now we'll get down to filing it out. We're almost done filing. I didn't think you wanted to watch the whole thing, but um, on larger wheels that you're spoking, uh, you can use these. These are called uh, crossing out files and they're very, not that one, they're a very different shape. They're uh, one, one curvature, one radius on that side and it, whoops, and a different radius on this side and they're very fine. They're fine number five uh, and these are FL Grobitz. I think they're Swiss, Swiss actually. Um, so you can use a whole bunch of different files. This is a three, a Nicholson three, and this is flat on one side and and uh, round on the other. And then when you get that's for the rough roughing out of the file. And then when you get down, you get more and more um, fine. This is doesn't even have a number on it. But this is um, also have a slight curvature on this side and a more on this side and these are very very fine this 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 one's so fine you can hardly see the teeth and those will almost polish um, so you can this is the last thing you use these little needle files some of them have a safe edge on one side which is very helpful um, if you're up against something like this can you see that um, and you want to finish that off the safe edge keeps you from filing the up the uh, spoke while you're filing the outside, um, and you see some chalk here. When you get down to these really fine files, it's um, a good idea to chalk them like that. Uh, that keeps them from um, uh, getting full of uh, brass. The bra if you don't chalk them, the brass will stick in those very fine fine teeth and then it's very hard to get out. Um, you can try to get it out with a um, with a uh, card file 
a file card um, or you can dip them in a fairly weak solution like uh, of nitric acid uh, not for very long because it'll ruin the metal but uh, that will take the brass out and leave the teeth um, I've done that before and it works quite well but not more than oh five seconds and then wash it off in water immediately and be, of course be very very careful of nitric acid because that's uh, that's lethal if you smell it uh, so we're about done with that now we come to the uh, um, burnishing tool this is a small one and you can get in like this with just the point and you can after you file with these very fine files you can burn burnish that like that to a polish okay uh, now I think I'll run this past the um, the Fordham tool with a 400 um, grit polishing wheel and then I'll bring it back and show it to you one more thing um, when you file you don't want to file like this um, you want to file like this slowly and carefully and uh, that'll give you by far the best finish I've got one little place left there where I still see some a little round in that corner right there uh, and of course when you put it in the vise you'll be sure that you uh, put it on a piece of wood or in this case um, a post-it pad and that will keep the teeth nice and sharp because if you if you don't if you put metal to those teeth they're gonna uh, it's gonna ruin them pretty quick okay let's polish it up this is a regular Fordham tool there it is and this is let me see this is 400 grit you can buy these various wheels from Rio Grande you can just Google Rio Grande if you like but these are really nice for polishing brass and I have 50 80 120 400 and 800 grit and by the time you get to the 800 you have pretty much a mirror finish on the uh, on the brass and I don't like to hold the tool so I made this little rig so I can put it in there like that and uh, then I can approach it like a like a grinding stone basically what I'm doing here is taking off all the the uh, burrs Don't hit the teeth, whatever you do. Let me see. Um, that is 400. So we'll go to some uh, 800 here and finish her off. The 800 is the light green. You can use these, of course, in a Dremel tool, too. You don't have to have a Fordham. But... Uh, just be sure that when you uh, put them in the tool, come on, that they, um, they, they go, they rotate this direction, right? If you rotate them this direction, you're just going to break all those little feathers off. So be sure they rotate in the, in the right direction when you're, when you're doing it. I see, that's 80. Okay, we're down to uh, 800 now.
nice thing about the 800 is it uh, doesn't round off all the corners, all the edges. You don't want to round those too much. But there it is. That's the finished wheel. Um, see if I can find the original. There's the original too. This is the original. It looks pretty good. Uh, no one will ever see it, of course, inside the clock, but that's not the point. The point is you did it, and you want to make it right so that you know it's right, even if nobody ever sees it. So that's the finished wheel, and uh, I, think we'll, I think this is part three or part four. So we will uh, call that good for this episode, and uh, next thing we have to do is turn a, uh, a new... Uh, bushing for the center of that hole um, and then press fit it with a stake press fit it onto the uh, uh, arbor and then we can put it back in the clock and hopefully see if it works so thank you for watching and uh, come back anytime and uh, cheers <laughs>